it was very, very traumatic. Very, very traumatic, you know. But at the time, when you're living through it, you, you just see it as normal. It's only when you go out and, you know, you step away from that illusion of life, thinking these things are normal, that you go into the normal world that you see how not normal these things are. My name's John. I was born into a culture of pure crime and violence and everything bad that goes on in the world. When we was growing up, we was proper deprived of most things in life. You know, I, I can remember most of my childhood just feeling hungry. You know, um, there's situations where, you know, when, when we was living in Stratford, where, you know, when we was, I was five, six, probably younger than that, and we were just, me and my sisters were just being dragged around from, you know, crack ass to crack ass, you know, not being fed no food, you know, not being given, you know, proper nutrition and stuff. And I can remember one occasion we was in a so-called crack flat, and uh, yeah, this guy, he was, uh, um, he was injecting heroin. And uh, yeah, he went over, he overdosed and he fell on top of me. And uh, he was fitting whilst on top of me. And I can remember all the other drug users trying to pull me out from underneath him. And uh, yeah, I remember laying underneath him feeling absolutely terrified. <laughs> I went to a jail of, in May of 2018. My mum passed away on the de uh, December the 13th, 2018, so it was only a few months after I went away that she actually passed away. But yeah, she passed away whilst I was in prison. I went to her funeral. I was handcuffed to a prison officer, so I had to bury her in handcuffs, yeah. You know, in prison, you can't show emotion. Emotion is seen as weakness. And, you know, if you're seen to be weak in prison, then you're going to get the bully boys after you. Can you tell me the support system or the people mm. that support you in the mm. Neil Street Espresso Cafe? Wow, yeah. Uh, the support I'm receiving is phenomenal. It's, the only way I can describe it is like, you know, when you go bowling, and you put the rails up for the kids on either side of the lane. And no matter what happens, that ball ain't going off of that lane, you know? That's how I feel, you know, I've got, um, I've got a great family at Newell Street, you know? They're nothing but good intentions. And, you know, whatever goes on in my personal life, it could, you know, it could be traumatizing. You know, so I feel like as soon as I go to work and I get wrapped up around my, my New Street family, you know, it's just, all that goes out the window and I'm, and I'm filled with, Nothing but, you know, right information, you know, the correct support. Right now we are in a place called The Manor, which is located in Harold Hill. <clears throat> Harold Hill is, uh, is where I met my, my first partner, the mother of my children. It's rather unfortunate that we can't get Ashley and yeah. her four children today. <clears throat> yeah. So what happened? Well, she was due to uh, be a part of what we're doing now, but we've had a falling out. You know, it's, it's very common in my culture, you know, arguments and stuff like that. But um, yeah, unfortunately, she couldn't she couldn't make it today, which I'm, which is a shame really because it would be nice to have all of my children here today. Yeah. But I heard Shauna is coming today with baby Lucy. Yeah, that's correct. Shauna, she's the uh, um, mother to my fifth child from my second relationship. We're very much similar. So I first met John, I say, just coming up three years ago. Um, I was at a party at my friend's house and um, uh, <laughs> I met him down at Vicarage Lane to get some drugs. <laughs> and then from there, we brought him back to my friend's house with a party and we started talking and getting to know each other. And from there, we started seeing each other. Yeah, so that's about three years ago now, yeah. From the moment you met John and now, yeah. how much of a positive change has he been making? I, I believe that since he's working in that calf, it's been a major positive uh, change, major. That he comes back, he's just a positive aura. He talks about doing good with people, doing good for himself, helping people and stuff like that. So he's made a dramatic change in his life, for all the better. 
Because we both come from families that have run drugs and abuse and, and obviously mums and dads and fighting and stuff like that. And we don't, we don't want that for our kids. So that's the only thing that's going to make us, she's going to make us better people. How do you see baby Lucy being a big part in your, both of your lives? Baby Lucy, there's only one way I can describe her, and that's just smiles. You know, she seems to have like this, this energy about her where, you know, she makes people feel good when they're in her presence, you know? You know, she's only a six-month-old baby, but already you can see she's got a huge character, you know? And, yeah, I'm proud of her. I'm proud of her. Oh, pardon you. Pardon you. Pardon you. Now to go back to your past for a bit. So what exactly did you do like, that led you into prison and what kind of um, crimes that you did? I attacked my mother-in-law. Um, at the time, I was, I was with my ex-partner. Uh, yeah, she was about to have our fourth child. And uh, there was issues between my ex-partner and her mother. And her mother was trying to bite her daughter by making lies up, getting my children put into care. There was an altercation when I confronted her about you know, trying to get my, my kids put into a, which I class as, you know, a, a dangerous system. And, uh, and yeah, there was tempers flared and basically I didn't know how to control my anger. So I punched her on the chin and I broke her jaw and I went to prison for it. You've been repeating the word family. Such a big word to describe your yes, critics. It is. What about your real family? Uh, well, well, look, I come from a very, very, very broken family. It's a big family and, you know, I don't... I can't think of one person within my family now which don't have some kind of dependency issues or drug issues or violence, alcohol, domestic... You know, everything, you know, which is unstable within a family exists within my family. Can you show us the scar that you that stays with you forever on your body that uh, affected you the most? Right, well, the one that probably affects, affects me the most is probably the one up here, that one and that one. See, that, that was down to a different incident. That was a, um, that was a altercation I had with someone in my family and uh, they squirted me with acid, sulfuric acid. I caught my stepdad cheating on my mother just before she died. In the case of my mum, she knew she only had a few months to live. So then to find out you've been being cheated on by your partner for 22 years, you know, really affected her and it really affected me. So I drove round to his house to do him, basically, to pop her at him. And uh, yeah, there was an altercation in the house and he squirted me with acid. If you were to think about your life mm. growing up until now, and mm. if you could talk to your younger self, wow, what would you say to him? Oh. I'd probably just give him a cuddle, and I'd say, "Don't worry, boy. I think it's gonna be all right. I think it'll be all right in the end. Just crack on, yeah." Yeah. I'll be like, oh, by the way, when you're 13, <laughs> Nanny's going to catch you nicking the meat out of the freezer. <laughs> yeah, putting it in the oven. Yeah, nah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll probably just give him a cuddle, Faz, and just let him know that everything's going to be all right, mate. And I'll tell him to spend a bit more time with your mum. Yeah. Yeah, spend a bit more time with mummy because you're going to miss her when she's gone. That's what I'd say. Mm. 